Hello, 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 hello. Hey ladies, how are you doing? I hope you're there. Um, I posted some, some goodies for you tonight, some notes. Um, get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Create in me a clean heart and purify me a Thank you, Jesus. Hope you can hear this. Let me know if you can hear it. I see you, Penny. Hey, Penny. Create in me a clean heart so that I can worship you, Lord. That's what we're talking about tonight. Prepare my heart to love. Purify me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, hey, Penny. Good to see you on here. Can you hear the music? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hey, Doreen, I see you. Can you hear it? Doreen says, hey, Deborah from BC, Canada. Hey there. Hey, Julie Griffin. I see you. Created me a clean heart so that I may worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I go in so she can find it here. I, I posted this song on the, um, it's on this, this page. So you can go back and listen to it later. I'm just playing it right now to give people time to get on. So, um, hopefully you can hear it. I don't really know where the speaker is. <laughs> hey, Sonia, I see you. This is by Donnie McClurkin. It's called Creating Me a Clean Heart. And like I said, I have it posted on your, um, it's posted on this page. So you can always go back and listen to it. Amen, amen, amen. Created me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, ladies. Um, okay, let's see. Doreen, I did listen to it before, so I do know what it's being what is being sung. That's great. Hey Sonia, I see you. And I see Julie. It's good to see everybody. Um, and I'm sure more will be getting on as we get started. So I think before we actually start with the study for tonight, I want to go over some things from last week and um, just give everybody a couple more minutes to get on. Um, but let's open up in prayer, okay? Father God, I worship you. I praise you, God. I thank you so much, Lord, because you are our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our Prince of Peace, our everlasting Father, Lord. We thank you, God, for loving us even while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I thank you, Lord, that your word, God, it really just um, cleanses us. I thank you, Lord, that as we seek you with our whole heart, Lord, 
God, that you just transform us. You transform our minds. You transform our hearts. And God, you make us more like you. So God, help us tonight to seek you with our whole heart, Lord, to come to you, Lord, and say, God, clean me. Lord, prepare my heart to love. Prepare my heart to love unconditionally. Prepare my heart to love and not be bitter, to not be um, stubborn. Prepare my heart to love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, so let's see here. Hey, Patricia, I see you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's go over a little bit from last week to start with, just to be sure that um, we give people time to get on. And uh, I wonder if you ladies have got your books and if you're doing the work in the book. I know, I think it was, was it Doreen or was it Penny that sent me a copy of, it might have been Penny, I'm not sure, a copy of the work that she had done in the book. So that was exciting. So um, that's fun. Send me, send me pictures of that. I love to see that you're doing your work. And she had actually filled out the page on God's love. And she had um, told me what else she had. She didn't tell me everything. I could just see the writing in there that she had done the work. So that's great. So um, so do the work in your books. I think that will be um, a great blessing to you if you if you really dig into God's Word and, and meditate on His Word and spend time with Him. Um, you know, one of the questions from last week's study that's in the book, um, it says, can you recognize genuine love versus manipulation? Can you recognize genuine love versus manipulation? You know, the, the enemy is, he's very um, cunning. He's very cunning. And he will come to us um, and even try to twist God's word to really, you know, if we don't know God's word, the enemy will come to us and he will misquote God's word to us. So we need to study God's word. We need to know God's word. But, you know, the enemy will also come through people. Um, and he'll try to, you know, um, manipulate us um, through situations, through people, relationships, different things. Um, because sometimes God tells us to do something and we know we've heard from God. But then the enemy comes and says, did God really say, did God really say that? You know, and then the enemy will give us um, another avenue, which makes total sense. It makes really good sense. And it seems like, you know that we should do that because it makes really good sense. But if God has told us to do something, then we need to learn to obey the voice of God and not be manipulated by the enemy and not be manipulated by others. Um, you know, others um, who are full of Jesus, who can encourage us and who can, um, you know, strengthen us and sharpen us and all that. That's wonderful. But, you know, in this world, we are mixed up with um, sinners and saints. And so you have to be wise. You have to know that, you know, um, that everybody is not speaking to your best interest and, and learn to listen to God. Hey, Janie, I see you. Hey, Tiffany, I see you. Glad you're on here. So, um, so can you recognize genuine love versus manipulation? And that is from last week's um, study of God's love. It's in your book on page 21. So be sure to do the lessons in your book and really, really talk to God and let God really search your heart and do some surgery, you know, in some areas that maybe, maybe you hadn't thought about. So just, you know, let God um, just speak to you and, and really um, speak to you about who he is and, and what he's doing in your life right now, because he is a now God. He's a right now God, and he has a word for you right now. And, you know, even though I'm going to be teaching the word tonight about prepare my heart to love, I'm going to be teaching this lesson. But, um, you know, God is going to speak to each of you differently. So, you know, he's just like that. He's just so cool because he just, you know, I can be saying one thing, and the Holy Spirit is interpreting it into your ear to be specifically for you, of what God is saying to you concerning this lesson tonight. So that's, it's always exciting to see how God works like that. Okay, so tonight, if you've got your Bibles, I want you to keep your finger on Psalm 51, because that's where we're going to be going to all night is Psalm 51. And, um, but we are going to flip around to a few other things as well, but um, we're definitely going to Psalm 51. So keep your Bibles opened to Psalm 51. So let me just open mine up to Psalm 51 right now. 
And let's see, we're going to start with uh, verses 16 through 19. 16 through 19. It says, it says, for thou desirest not sacrifice. And I'm, this is the King James. So pardon my King James. That's, it's my Bible. So, but I'll try to like give you the, uh, the Deborah Ross um, slang version as I go. So it's not quite so proper. Um, and then I'll also pull up my phone and use some other versions as well. But this is the King James. It says, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou desirest not burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. So, <clears throat> God is looking for hearts. He's looking for hearts that are broken, that are contrite. Um, <clears throat> not that he wants us to be broken all the time. That's not it at all. That's not it. He, he wants us to have joy. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to walk um, <clears throat> in the fullness of joy in our everyday life. But the problem is, is that because of our, uh, our pride and our self-centeredness and our stubbornness and all of those things, um, oftentimes we build walls and these walls keep us from experiencing the fullness of the joy of God and the peace of God. And so God says, I want you to come to me and I want you to agree with me about what sin is because, you know, in today's world, unfortunately, sin can be very gray, but sin is not gray to God at all. You know, there's black and there's white. It's very clear. But in, in our culture, in today's world, it's very gray. And so sometimes we have a hard time agreeing with God about some things because we, you know, um, we've got these walls up and we think, you know, well, I mean, this is just the way God made me. And, you know, God understands how I am. And, you know, um, I'm just not there yet. <laughs> and all these different things that we say to justify those gray areas in our life. But God says, I want you to come to me agreeing with me about what sin is because sin will kill you. God, you know, the reason that he talks about sin is not because he's trying to keep something from us. He's trying to get something to us. And our sin is hindering that because sin is, is, is trying to kill us. And God says, I don't want you to die. I want you to live and I want you to have life more abundantly, but you've got to understand there's boundaries. I've got boundaries, not because I'm trying to put you in bondage. I've got boundaries because I'm trying to set you free. I'm trying to give you freedom, but you've got to understand these boundaries. He says, come to me with a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. And <clears throat> So contrite, the word contrite means feeling or expressing remorse. Feeling or expressing remorse. Um, it means affected by guilt. So when we go to God with a contrite heart, we go to him um, understanding that, you know, agreeing with him about whatever he's tapping on our heart, saying, okay, let's fix this. You know, um, God is such a gentleman. And the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. God's a gentleman. Jesus is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is, is not going to just dump all the stuff on us at one time where we go, oh my goodness, I can't deal with this. It's just my sins are too much. I can't take it. So God will, you know, he will tap on our heart and he'll say, okay, you know, Deborah, let's work on this. I want, I want to work on this now. And if we avoid that tapping on the heart and we just go about our business, then we just kind of stay there. We stay in this, 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 this funk, this one little place with God, and we don't move forward. We don't progress and go from glory to glory, you know, until we deal with that thing. And so then once we deal with that, then later down the road, the Lord will come and tap again. and He'll say, okay, now let's deal with this because God wants us to be clean. He wants us to have a clean heart. And this world is always dumping on us. It's always dumping on us. Hey, Cindy, um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but, you know, 
the way the devil tries to get me is he tries to get me offended. You know, I can be going about my day having a great day, <laughs> everything's going good, and bam, somebody offends me. You know, somebody hurts my feelings, somebody disappoints me, you know, um, and and it weighs heavy on my heart and on my mind. And, and if I let it get down in there, if I let it get down in there, it can become bitterness. And we talked about how, you know, um, how Naomi, she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Myra uh, because I'm bitter. And so we don't want to get like that. We don't want to get to where we are bitter. So we've got to be sure to purge when the enemy tries to put offenses, uh, create offenses in our life and tries to, to get us hurt or disappointed or, um, you know, push down. Hey, Monica, I see you. Hello from California. I see you, Monica. That's great. So tonight we're in Psalm 51 and Psalm 50, and we're talking about a broken and contrite spirit, and that is expressing remorse over sin and agreeing with God what sin is because God wants to heal us and sin wants to kill us and we don't want to die. We want to live in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Okay. So, um, contrite in the Hebrew is dakal and it means crushed, um, crushed. So when we come to God and we have this crushed, this, this remorseful, uh, crushed feeling because sin crushes us, you know, it's, it's this, it's this crushingness of, of, um, it's just gross, you know, and we try to act like it. I mean, it, it comes to us all sparkly. Sin comes to us sparkly, like a glass of wine. It comes very sparkly. It may come in the form of excitement. It may come in the form of being part of the group. It may come in the form of, you know, I mean, all sorts of ways sin comes to us. But when we, when we're really being truthful with God, when the Holy Spirit taps us on the heart and the Holy Spirit says, he says, darling, he says, my sweet daughter, he says, let's get rid of that. Let's let go of that. You don't need it. It's not becoming. It's making you, it's weighing you down. It's, it's, it's a burden. You know, it's, it's causing you to lose sleep. Let it go. Let it go. Give it to me. Give me your sin. So, <clears throat> if you look at 2 Corinthians and uh, 2 Corinthians 7, keep your finger in Psalm 51 and go to 2 Corinthians 7, and we're looking at verse 10. It says, For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world works death. Godly sorrow works repentance to salvation. You see, <clears throat> when we just say, okay, let me, let me see if I can explain this. Okay. Everything in the word of God has to be rightly divided. Okay. There is a, a plumb line in the word of God. There is a balance. Okay. Um, in Psalm, uh, God says that, um, a false balance, um, he doesn't like a false balance. He likes a just weight. That's his delight. So, so if you think about those uh, scales of righteousness and you put something on one side and it goes boom like that, or you put something on the other side and it goes boom like that. So God wants us to have the scales of righteousness balanced. He does not want it to be like this. And so, so many times we take scriptures and we, we pile up the one that we really like or the ones that we really like. We pile those scriptures up. And so, and we kind of form our own little doctrine out of it. And God says, you know what? I want you to understand that you've got to know this part too, because when you get it just right, then you have that balance. That's what he wants us to have is that balance. And so, so many times people will, you know, um, because the Bible does say uh, that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that you shall be saved. Absolutely. It does say that. But if you just tip your scales to, um, to the to how simple salvation is because it is very simple it's very simple but you don't also put the weights on there about god and who he is and what sin does to us then you miss you miss that sweet spot with god and you miss the whole point and so second corinthians um and that is uh chapter 7 verse 10 says for godly sorrow 
works repentance to salvation, not to be repentant of, but the sorrow of the world works death. You see, so many times, you know, people will say, well, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got caught. I'm sorry because I'm embarrassed. I'm sorry because I just messed up, you know, but it's not about that. It's about being sorry because we sinned against a holy God. It's about agreeing with God. So godly sorrow works repentance and repentance means turning and going the other way. So if you're going this way and you have godly sorrow, then you, you say, I hate that. That's not working. That is not working. That's killing me. It's killing me. And you turn and you go the other way. You agree with God. So godly sorrow works repentance. You know, I'm going to read this um, out of the Amplified. So I'm going to turn to 2 Corinthians, and I'm actually going to start in chapter 6. So I'm going to read some of this to you from the Amplified, and then we'll um, move on back in um, Psalm 51. So I'm going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to go to verse, um, let's start with verse 11. Okay. It says, <clears throat> we are speaking freely to you, Corinthians. We are keeping nothing back and our heart is open wide. There is no limit to our affection for you, but you are limited in your own affection for us. Now, in the same way as a fair exchange for our love toward you, I'm speaking as I would to children. Open wide your hearts to us also. Do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them inconsistent with your faith. Child of God, now I'm talking to you now, I'm not reading the Bible, <laughs> but God does not want us to be unequally yoked with unbelievers in that we get tangled up in bondage from this world. He wants our life to be an aroma, a sweet fragrance of godliness. We need to be different, peculiar people, set apart, righteous, holy. You know, people should know us by um, our fragrance, not so much by what we say, not, not, not because I say I'm a Christian, not because I carry my Bible around, not because I quote things on Facebook, not because I go to church every Sunday or I sing in the choir or I teach Sunday school, but by my fragrance. So people should know us by our character, by our fragrance. So it says, this, I'm in verse 14. It says, do not make mismatched alliances with them inconsistent, inconsistent with your faith. Don't do this. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Belial? And that's Satan. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. And this is what God said. God said, oh yeah, uh, Penny, it's 2 Corinthians. And right now I'm reading uh, chapter 6 and I'm amplified right this minute. Okay. All right. And so now I'm reading uh, starting in verse it's down at the bottom, probably 16. It says, I will, this is God speaking. This is God. God is saying this. God is saying, I will dwell among them and walk among, among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So come out from among them. Unbelievers, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch the unclean thing. And he says, I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. Who wants favor? I do. Favor. And I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Ladies, there is a theme in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, and it is this. If you, if you do a word, set, a word search, um, in your Bible app or on your computer, you'll see that there's a theme from Genesis to Revelation that God is saying throughout Scripture. He's saying, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. He's trying to get us to that place. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That's where he's trying to get us.
from Genesis to Revelation. And so the thing is, is that we uh, need to agree with him. He says, come out from among them. Don't touch the unclean thing. Why do we want to keep tampering with things that, you know, this group of friends are doing and that group of friends are doing and, you know, what they're doing on TV, what they're doing in the movies, you know, it's not for us. It's not for us. You know, we are daughters of the king. We're daughters of the king and we need to wear our crown, girls. Put your crown on. Carry your scepter. Put your robe on, your robe of righteousness. and agree with God and be obedient to his word. And when we are disobedient, be quick to confess our sins with a contrite heart, with, you know, um, with a uh, remorseful heart, with a heart that's crushed because we've sinned against God, not because we embarrassed ourselves, but because we sinned against a holy God, our daddy, our father. Abba, Father in heaven. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, so 1 Samuel 15, 22. Don't turn there, but it says obedience is better than sacrifice. You see, God wants us to be obedient. Hey, Sarah. Um, God wants us to be obedient. Obedient to the Holy Spirit. Obedient to his word. So when we read his word, um, first of all, we, you know what? Before I read the word of God, I like to say, God, before I read your word, would you speak to me through your word? I need a rhema word. I need, I, need a, I need an unction from the Holy Spirit. I need something to pop off the page and just, just pour into me. So God, open my eyes, open my ears, open my heart to receive your word. And then God, once I've received your word, you know, I'll tell you this, ladies. After you receive the word of God, the enemy is going to come immediately and try to snatch it. So when you get an aha moment with God, when you get a, a, a rhema word of God, when God tells you something that's like a divine, um, um, uh, I'll say divine secret, but it's, it's, it's a secret to those who are blind, but to those who he reveals himself to who see, um, it is mysteries. And he, he tells us mysteries, um, but it's a mystery to those who are blind, those in the world but he unfolds it piece by piece, bit by bit to those who love him and who seek them with their whole heart, with your whole heart. So once we get a rainbow word from God, the enemy's going to come immediately and try to snatch it. He's going to try to steal it. I mean, you can count on it. He's going to try to steal the word. That's what he does. And so we've got to say, huh, -uh. we have got to be resolute in our faith. And we've got to say, you know what? I would rather... Believe God than man. I'd rather believe God than man. And <clears throat> I want to obey God. Holy Spirit, help me to obey you. God, help me to obey you. Right now, I am tempted. Right now, I am getting caught up in this thing. But God, help me to obey you. Because you know what I find? I, I find this. I really do, ladies. And I, I promise you, I think if you'll start to um, adhere to this, I think you'll see some changes in your life. But I get tempted just like you do just like you do. And I don't always pass the test, but I want to, and I try to. But I will tell you this, in those moments where, where a temptation comes to me, and it could be something very easy. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be something simple, very simple. And when I obey the Holy Spirit and don't do that little simple thing that it's not really that big of a deal, it's really not. Hey, Cindy, it's not that big of a deal, but the Holy Spirit told me not to do it. And when I obey the Holy Spirit without fail, the Lord brings a great big blessing in my life immediately following. Without fail. So <clears throat> many of us could be blocking our blessings because we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, not obeying the Holy Spirit. Obey the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a test. It's a test. <laughs> what does what your TV used to say a long time ago? This is only a test. So <clears throat> it's a test. So when you get tested, when you get tempted, when the enemy tries to come and snatch the word, you know, when, when, and he will do that. So, but when that happens, just, you know, just, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of praise that you give to the Lord. So when you're in that moment, that defining moment where, you know, um, and it, like I said, it might not even be anything that big. You know, I mean, 
I'll just tell you what what mine has been. Um, you know, like um, so. Let's say I'm on vacation, okay, and um, you know, a glass of wine, a glass of wine. Well, that's not going to take away from my salvation. It's not going to, you know, make me go to hell. But the Holy Spirit says, don't do it. Don't do it. And I have found that even though it's sparkling and even though I'm thinking, you know, I'm on vacation, whatever. But if I say no, no. And it's a very simple thing. It's so simple. But yet it's so tempting, you know. But I've always seen God come through and bless immediately following. And it could be something big. You know, your temptation could be something really big. I don't know. Um, but, hey, Angie, I see you. Hey, Michelle. So, but whatever God is dealing with you about, if you will just learn to press toward the mark, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, press toward the mark. Hit the mark. That's what we're talking about tonight. Hit the mark. So I promise you, you will see the blessings of God, and they will chase you down and overtake you because that's the kind of God we serve. He's a good God. Okay, so <clears throat> last week we talked about big G, little O, little D, and we talked about that being L-O-M, and that is the creative covenant God. And we talked about how God says, I will love you no matter what because he's a covenant God. And that's that's correct. So we're talking about this, uh, the scale of uh, the, uh, the scale of justice. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Somebody say yes. The scale of justice, you know, it has the little thing that goes like this, and if you put something on one side, it goes this way. You can measure gold in it or whatever. And it, so anyway, so we're talking about the scale of justice. So God is L-O-M. He's L-O-M. He's the creative covenant God. He's the God that will love you no matter what. That's his covenant. However, he is also L-O-R-D. He is, and if you look in your Bibles, in your King James, you'll see big L, big O, big R, big D. He is Jehovah. He is Yahweh. He is a righteous judge, and he's a God of truth. So not only is he a creative covenant God who says, I'll love you no matter what, he is also a righteous judge. So see, if you just tip your scales to the God who loves you no matter what, you're off. You've got to get your scales in the middle and understand that he is both. He is both a righteous judge and the creative covenant God who loves you no matter what. So tonight we're talking about Jehovah, Lord, Yahweh, the righteous judge. He, he says, I am the I am. I am the I am. And so, <clears throat> you know, the Jews considered his title Jehovah. We say Jehovah, but Yahweh. They consider it to be so holy. They don't even say it. They don't even say, let's see right here. They don't even say this, okay? So, but, you know, I find that we oftentimes, um, as Christians, you know, we just, I mean, we say all kinds of slang words for the Lord and some really, really bad stuff in movies, really bad stuff, and then we listen to it. Ooh. Cut that stuff off. Cut it off, you know? Don't listen to that stuff. So because he is holy, he's holy, and we need to have respect for him and his names. He is holy. He's a holy God. Okay, so we should come to God with total respect and total fear. And I don't mean fear as in he's going to crush you like a bug because that's not what God wants. He doesn't want us to fear him as if he's some, you know, big, um, uh, big um, mean guy upstairs that's ready to just boom, crush you. That's not it at all. But we come to him with a holy fear, knowing that he is God. He is my breath. He is my heartbeat. If, if it wasn't for him, I would have no heartbeat. If it wasn't for him, I would have no breath. He is everything. He is my life. So I come to him with total respect and fear because he is the ultimate judge of of everything. You know, it's so funny because people say, you know, well, that's not who God is to me, or, you know, um, you know, well, I just don't believe God's like that or whatever. Well, Sister Susie, guess what? He is who he is. He says, I am that I am. And it doesn't matter what we think he is, he is that he is. He's God. He's God. And he is everything good 
because he's a good God, but he's also a righteous judge because sin cannot um, live in his presence. It can't live in his presence because sin is death and death doesn't live in his presence. Life is in his presence. So if, if we're in his presence, everything has to be clean. It has to be full of life, full of life. And the Holy Spirit is trying to clean us day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, so that we can get into that, that sweet spot with God and experience all of the goodness that he has for us because he is a good God and he loves us so much. Okay, so let's look at Psalm 50 and verse 5. If you got your Bibles open, we're still in Psalm 50 and verse 5. So it says, Gather my saints together unto me, those, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So God is, he's the covenant God. Now look down at verse 14 in, in chapter 50. It says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Offer to God thanksgiving. Ladies, we've got we've to gotta praise him. We've got to thank him and pay our vows. You know what? Is there something God's asked you to do? Maybe last year? Maybe yesterday? Maybe five years ago? And you just hadn't done it yet. You just hadn't done it yet. So we need to offer unto God thanksgiving and pay our vows to the Most High. If God has asked you to do something, we need to do it. We need to do it. And because, because he's wanting to bless us. He's wanting to get something to us. But we got we to gotta obey so that he can pour out his blessings on us. Okay, and then verse 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. You see, we've got to cry out to God in the day of trouble. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Help me to agree with you about what sin is, and then help me to cry out to you in the day of trouble to cry out to you, he says, and, and glorify him. So we've got to glorify him, praise him and glorify him. And then jump down to verse 23. It says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Listen to this. It says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. When you offer praise, you are glorifying God. When you offer praise. But, you know, here's the thing, girls. <clears throat> we can't praise God out of this side of our mouth and curse people out of this side. We can't praise God out of this side of our mouth and sin out of this side. We got to get it all working together and glorify God with our whole heart. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me, God. Don't take your presence from me, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay, so, so he says, order our conversation right, and he will, it says he will show us his salvation. We've got to keep our conversation right. You know, it's tempting to get on, on the hotline with your girlfriends and start the gossip chat and start the, you know, the woe is me and start all that stuff. It's tempting. But we have got to order our conversations correctly. And he says he will show us his salvation. And his salvation includes a lot of good stuff in this life and in the life to come. He wants to pour out victory. He wants to pour out deliverance. He wants to pour out prosperity. He wants to pour out healing. He wants to pour out all of the, all of the goodness of the kingdom in our lives. But he says, we got to get our conversation going right. Get your conversation going right. Okay, so as we're looking on, um, let's look at Psalm 50. Okay, so now we're getting to the punchline. So hold on. Are you with me? Are y'all still with me? I see you on there. Are you still on there? Okay. All right, so here we go. So now we're talking about um, the sweet spots. Let's look at, um, let's see. No, let's, let's jump around. I already did the sweet spot. That's the covenant. This is what I want to talk about now. Okay, bear with me for a second. It's it's kind of crazy doing this in the computer because I don't have live faces that I'm looking at. So I'm just trusting the Holy Spirit to speak through me, and I pray to God that you will hear the voice of God as we do this through 
the internet. So anyway, um, okay, so I want to tell you real quickly before we get into Psalm 51 um, to finish up our study is I want to clarify some things with you so you'll understand uh, some words in the Bible that you might be thinking, well, what's the difference? You know, that word sounds like this word, and I don't know the difference between those words. So let's clarify it. Okay, so the word iniquity, the word iniquity, Iniquity means a bend toward sin. It's a cobweb. So whenever you see iniquity in your Bible, it means a bend toward sin. It means, you know, you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it. You don't know why you keep doing it. You just keep doing it. It's like perpetual sin. You just keep doing it. Maybe your parents did it. Maybe your grandparents did it. Or whatever it is, you just keep doing it. You know, and you say, well, I'm a Christian, but, you know, God knows how I am. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. He delivers us from our iniquities. He delivers us from our iniquities. But here's the thing, sisters. We got to be willing to let it go and stop holding on to it. Stop holding on to it. Let it go. You know, and sometimes you got to say, God, take it from me. And, and, and you may have to say, take it from me. Um, until it until it gets gone. It's not that he's taken he, he he takes it immediately. The problem is we take it back. Okay, so so we have to continue to say, God, take this from me. I don't like this. I don't I don't want to be like this. You got to see it first. If you don't see it, you'll never get rid of it. You got to see it, and you got to agree with God that it's not the way He made you. It's not just the way you are. It's not just the way your family is. It's iniquity. It's iniquity, and you got to get rid of it. It's a bend towards sin, praise God, hallelujah. Okay, so iniquity is a bend towards sin. And the Bible talks about he delivers us from all of our iniquities. Okay, then the word sin, the word sin, uh, everybody say, uh, sin, sin, ooh, sin is gross. Okay, so <laughs> sin is an offense against divine law. You know what's interesting is that um, in our culture, people say, well, you know, that's not, that might be sin to you, but that's not sin to me. But honey, look it up in your dictionary. Look it up in your Webster dictionary. Uh-huh. You know what it says? An offense against divine law. That's what it says. Okay? So it's, a, it's an offense against God. It means to miss the mark. It means to miss the mark. You missed. It's sin. <laughs> to miss the mark, <laughs> okay? So we got to agree with God about what sin is when we miss the mark, okay? And then transgression, okay? So transgression <clears throat> means trespass. It is when you sin against a person or you sin against a nation or you sin against a group. So you, you trespass against somebody, okay? So trespass or transgression, you sin against a person. So when you see these words in your Bible, um, you can begin to understand what God is saying. He wants to deliver us from all of this stuff. Not just when we say, oh, I sin because I said a cuss word or I sin because I, you know, whatever. No, he wants to get us delivered and free from all of it, all of the above, the iniquity, Hey, Michelle, the iniquity, the transgression, the sin, all of it. He wants us to be free, and whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right, so let's look on at Psalm 51, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6 in Psalm 51. Okay, it says, <clears throat> Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. Blot them out. Okay, but here's the thing. You don't just say blot out my transgressions, but then you don't agree with God about what transgression is. Okay? So blot out my transgressions. God, I identify that transgression. I have identified it. You have pointed it out to me by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm agreeing with you. God, blot it out. That's ugly. I want to get rid of it. Ugh. Get rid of it. And then it says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my bend towards sin, my perpetual sin, my generational sin, the stuff that I say, God made me that way. God knows how I am. Uh-uh. No, 
No, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. God, I am agreeing with you that you didn't make me that way. That's not who I am. I'm a daughter of the king. Wash me, God. Wash me. And he says, and my sin is ever before me. My sin is ever before me. So sin, I have missed the mark. I've missed the mark. I have offended divine law. I have sinned against God. You know, it's not that I'm embarrassed that I got caught. It's not that I'm embarrassed because somebody saw me. I have sinned against God, my daddy, my heavenly father. And so we're reading on in verse 3, and this is Psalm, Psalm 51. It says, For I acknowledge my transgressions. I acknowledge my transgressions. I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, and thou, and that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Remember, he's the righteous judge. He is the creative covenant God. He will love you no matter what, but he's also the righteous judge. He is Jehovah, and you have to find the sweet spot with that, because he is both. Okay, so he says, um, verse 4, it says, and be clear when you judge. And verse 5 says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. I was shaping in iniquity. That's what we're talking about. I was shaping in that generational curse in my mother's womb. I was shaped in iniquity. Okay, it says, And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, now listen to this. God says, I desire truth in your inward parts. So verse 6 says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom in the in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom god wants us to have truth on the inside ladies here's the thing you know <clears throat> it's not about carrying your bible around it's not about doing your sweet little bible studies it's not about going to church on sunday singing in the choir paying your tithes you know um making your facebook post and all that stuff and wearing your having your bumper sticker on the back of your car mm -mm. nothing wrong with all that it's all good <laughs> okay it's all good but it's about the heart it's about the heart God sees the heart. It doesn't matter what face we put on, what mask we put on. It doesn't matter what we chant online. It matters about the heart, the hidden things of the heart. And verse 7 says, Purge me with hyssop that I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Ladies, there's nothing better than being washed and being whiter than snow. There's nothing better than being purged and, and really agreeing with God. And we're going to talk about that hyssop in just a minute as well. But let's read on. Okay, verse 8 says, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Sin breaks the bones. There's consequences to sin. I hate those consequences. Don't you? I hate them. And verse 8 says, make me to hear joy and gladness. God, I'm crying out to you, God. I want to hear joy and gladness. Those bones that have been broken, Lord, I want to rejoice. I don't want to be, be broken like this. I want to be full of joy. And verse 9 says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Blot out all my bend towards sin. Take it from me, God. Verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Interesting. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to back up a minute. Okay, we're going to look real quick at verse 7. It says, purge me with hyssop. Purge me with hyssop. And I looked up this word hyssop. Um, hyssop is actually a vine, and it has a very shallow root. Um, it says the root can be like really a, like a half an inch, but the vine can grow to be like 20 feet tall. And the vine clings to the rock. And I think this is very interesting because here's the thing. It only takes a mustard seed faith. Mustard seed faith, like that little root in that hyssop. 
fine. But from that mustard seed faith, if we will cling to the rock, if we will cling to the rock, we can grow and grow and grow and grow to that 20 foot tall vine in our faith. Purge me with hyssop. Clean me with hyssop. Help me, Lord, to cling to you, to cling to the rock. Even in my mustard seed faith, help me to cling to you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And cast me not away from thy presence. Oh, my phone's ringing. Oh, wait, mm -mm. decline. Oh, did y'all hear the phone ring? I don't know if you did or not, but I just declined it. I thought I had it on silence. Hey, Judy, I see you, Mama. I see you. <laughs> okay, so um, so create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Now, this is what I want to show to you here, and this is really the punchline of our study. Okay, somebody keeps calling me, so I'm going to have to call them back in a minute, but I hope you're not hearing the phone ring. Um, it's ringing on my computer. I got my phone silenced, but it's ringing on my computer. Okay, so here it is. Here is, here is the punchline, ladies. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. It's his salvation. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, God. But help me to agree with you what sin is. Help me to take the mask off. Help me to stop pretending. Help me to stop, you know, thinking that it's all about hauling my Bible around. It's all about going to church. It's all about, you know, um, who sees me tithe or who sees me make a Facebook post. It's not about that, ladies. It's about your heart. God sees the heart. And if the heart has bitterness, if the heart has stubbornness say God help me to change help me to change God because I want to be sweet and pleasant I want to be sweet and pleasant I don't want to be bitter I don't want to be stubborn I want to be sweet God I want to have a clean heart towards you purge me with hyssop and ladies here is a key right here in verse 13 this is so important so important it says, then, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. You see, if we're trying to teach people about God, oh, you did hear the phone ring. I see that, Michelle. Okay. If we're trying to teach people about God, if we don't let God clean us up first, and purge those things in our own life, whether it be our vices, whether it be our iniquities, <laughs> our transgressions, our sins, whatever it is, you know, or just our bitterness, then people will not hear us. They will not hear us. You know, um, the scripture says that we need to take the, the, the board, the plank, the beam out of our own eye first before we try to get the splinter out of someone else's eye. So you see, if you want to be um, someone who has the beautiful aroma of Christ, someone who makes a difference in the kingdom, or maybe somebody who teaches, um, who mentors somebody, if you want to mentor somebody or, or teach the word, or, or just be an example to your children and your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren, just be an example. But we have to first say, God created me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Get this big beam, this big plank out of my eye so then I can see clearly to help get the splinter out of their eye. Because otherwise, they're going to say, oh, you're just a hypocrite. You're just like everybody else. You're just a hypocrite. You see? So it's not about the mask. we got to take the mask off. Take the mask off. God, help me to take the mask off. Help me to be a real God because I know you see my heart. I know you see my brokenness. God, I come to you with my brokenness. I come to you with my contrite and broken spirit, Lord. And I give you this. I give you my ugliness. I give you my sin. I give you my iniquity. It's not mine. It's not the way you made me. It's a dysfunction. I give it to you, God. Take it from me. Take it from me. I have missed the mark. God, help me to be obedient to your Holy Spirit. Because, God, I want to prepare my heart to love. I want to have a clean heart, God. 
clean me, purge me with hyssop. So <clears throat> our lesson for tonight is <clears throat> create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. That is our lesson for tonight. But the thing is, it's not about just saying it. It's about obeying it. It's about not letting our words go this way, saying praise the Lord, and this way, saying ugly things. we got to get it all going one way. If we're going to praise the Lord, we got to praise Him in all directions, not praising Him over here and cursing them over here. Get it all sweet. We need to have a sweet and pleasant aroma. Kingdom. Daughters of the King. Daughters of the King. That's who you are. A daughter of the King. So ladies, wear your crown. Wear your crown with a clean heart in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, we're going to close. <clears throat> your homework is to do lesson two. And yes, Michelle, we must be real before him because he knows it already. That's right. That's right. And he wants us to come and, um, and praise him. That's right. Okay, so let's, let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We worship you. We praise you, God. I thank you so much for the women who have joined tonight, Lord. I pray, God, that this study meant something to them. I pray, God, that, God, that you would do a mighty work in their heart, in their life. I pray, God, that you would, um, just restore to them the joy of their salvation, Lord, of your salvation. Restore that joy to them, Lord, as they agree with you about sin, agree with you about iniquity, agree with you about transgressions. And they <clears throat> they just give it to you, Lord. They just give it to you. They say, Lord, take it from me. Take it from me, Lord. Wash me. Make me clean. In Jesus' mighty name, ladies, do your homework, lesson two. And we're going to be having some fun on this little page, talking about some of the questions on there. And, and I hope you'll chime in and tell me uh, what God is speaking to your heart. Um, I love hearing from you. Tell your friends to join the group, uh, to join us next week as well, and to go back and watch the other videos if they missed them. So um, I pray that you have a blessed week, and you have sweet, sweet, sweet sleep tonight. And I will see you live next Tuesday. So love you, and bye-bye.